In Rocket League, there are six different hitboxes that every single car in the game falls under, and I've spent one week playing with all of them. Now the goal of this video was to document myself playing with each of the hitboxes, explain my thoughts on the differences, the pros, the cons, and then at the end, ranking all the hitboxes. Just in case you aren't aware, the six hitboxes are the Octane, Dominus, Breakout, Hybrid, Plank, and Merc. Every car in the game will be under one of these hitboxes, even if they look different. Cars like the Fennec, the Scarab, and the Octane have the exact same hitbox and so will act exactly the same on the field despite looking different from each other. And so, without further ado, let's jump into the first hitbox I tested, which was the old reliable Octane. I want to be real clear about this, let's get it straight, I am biased with this one. I've played in the Octane hitbox since I started playing the game, and so I think I'm going to avoid the bias at the end, and I'm just going to not include it in the rankings, because it would easily be at number one for me. But let's still dive into thoughts and opinions. So the Octane hitbox for me is like the go-to car when you want to start really looking to play the game properly and getting good. And that might sound a bit snobby, I guess, and sound like every other car isn't viable, but I think the Octane hitbox has the best all-around feel, and I guess that's also shown through its usage in the competitive scene. The big reason I like the Octane hitbox is because I find it to hit all of the things I look for in every other car, but all in one. Like, it's not completely flat, and so it's easy to drive and connect the ball when going under the ball, and it's not too long so you don't feel like you're bumping into things all the time, it's not too tall like the Merc where you feel like you're just driving a box around the field, it's just nice, it's in the middle. The downsides to the Octane, however, are that for a lot of the cars that fall into the hitbox, I think the car itself doesn't line up that well with the hitbox, and so it can be a bit tricky sometimes to hit the ball with the corner of the car, for example. However, the Fennec does line up really nicely, and so I think, strangely enough, the Fennec fits the feel of the Octane hitbox better than the Octane itself, and I think this is also why you see a lot of the pro players using it. Now, I won't go on too much about the Octane because, like I said, it's like the basic car. But going to the second car I tested, the Dominus. So I knew this was going to be decent because in the very first match of the day, this happened. Oh wow, that is first goal of the day in the Dominus. The first five seconds of, of gameplay today. Getting one of those days. Now in the past, I have previously said that I hated the Dominus. And I think that's a bit unfair actually. Because this time around, I focused more on what a lot of people know the Dominus for, and that's being the Freestylers car. So, I kind of messed around and went for some clips. Now, unfortunately, I didn't hit much at all, but almost hitting a few nice clips in the space of just a few hours was pretty cool. And there's something about the Dominus that just makes you feel more... mechy. In? Bro. As for the actual hitbox, I think it does feel a little bit long when you're on the ground, which I've never been a fan of, but... In the air, I think that I actually really like it like that. The length makes it feel easy to get those slight touches where you feel like the other cars just wouldn't reach. The Dominus hitbox is pretty clean. Like, it's not completely flat, and it has corners that are easy to read. And there's always this thing about the Dominus flicks because it is just so easy to get good flicks with this car. But I would say definitely a good car for those of you who are kind of good with mech in the air as I think this is where it shines the most. Now, day three was the breakout. I, I think I looked at it when I started this up and I had about 13 wins in this car in total over the past six or seven years. So you can tell I've barely ever played with this car. I never really liked how flat it was and just always felt like the Dominus was the better option. But this time around, I actually really, really enjoyed playing with it. This is weird feeling I got when I went from the Dominus to the Breakout. It was like the Breakout was just way lighter than the Dominus. And so I felt a lot faster. And obviously, we know that's not the case, but it just felt that way. The other pros I found when using this car was that you could get good power and could get some really clean touches with the corner because the hitbox and the car model lined up so well. So it was easy to get those nice corner hits. The flicks felt good. I even tried out the Jayza flick for the first time in my life, and that seemed to be really easy in this car. Oh. Not bad. It felt solid in the air, maybe because it felt so light, but also the power you could get from the musty flicks were actually insane. I genuinely had a lot of positive things to say about this car, and believe me, going to this, I did not think that was going to be the case. But probably the only downside I would say was because this car was more flat, there would be times that I was thinking I was going to hit the ball, and then I would just slide underneath it. 
but then again that probably comes down to just not playing with the car and not being used to playing with the car. Overall, I actually really like playing with the breakout hitbox, which I never thought I'd say. Next, the hybrid. Now, believe it or not, I actually have a decent amount of time using the hybrid, and that's all thanks to the Venom. Now, at first, I did try out the Skyline because I haven't really used it before, but I wasn't really feeling it that much. So I changed back to my trusty Venom, and once again, it did not disappoint me. The Venom, in my eyes, is like the perfect car that sits between competitive and hitting clips. And it's because it's kind of in the name of the hitbox, the hybrid. It's not too flat, but it's flat enough that you can get insane power on musties. Its corners are really easy to see, which means you can get good power shots. It's not too long that it feels like it's slow, but it's long enough that you can get insane flicks with it. Overall, it's just, I, I don't know, it just feels like a good car, I guess. Like, I feel good when I play in this car. I feel like everything is working. The mechanics, the flicks, power shots, soft touches, everything just seems to work. And as for its downsides, I'm gonna be honest, I couldn't really think of any. Maybe the only downside in my eyes is that the hybrid cars don't get as many decals. And so if you're a placebo player like I am and you want to be in a nice looking car, you might be a little bit stuck here. But it's literally the bottom of the barrel when it comes to hitbox problems. I, I just can't really find anything to pick at when it comes to the hybrid. Day 5 was the plank. Before I went in, I knew what the problem was going to be, and it was the problem. The plank is just so flat, man. Like, I chose the Batmobile because it's a car I used back in the day when I was a Cooksa fanboy, but playing with it now, I just couldn't get anything going. I think I struggled to hit the ball with the corner of my car because I would almost always hit with the underside of the wheel instead because they are so exposed. And so, because of that, I just aimed to use the front of my car for powerful hits instead. And then trying to get a reset in this car was almost impossible. I do manage to get one, but like you aren't seeing the amount of attempts that happened that day. It, was, it wasn't great. The car feels too long. It feels quite wide. And even when I switched over to the Mantis, which actually did feel a lot better, it still just felt like a lanky yet heavy car. One of the positives though was that it was really easy to get good flicks, which is common with these longer flatter cars. But apart from that, I really didn't enjoy playing in the Plank hitbox. The final day was playing in the Merc. The Merc hitbox is just a big box. It's literally just a big box. And so for that reason, I didn't mind it that much. I couldn't really do anything mechanical wise and I wouldn't even attempt to try flick the ball, but it was just pretty solid. I would say that it feels like a car you would give to a beginner. Like, here you go, can't really miss the ball with this thing. Don't worry about aerials or flicks, just drive into the ball and get good power that way. You can't really go wrong. So the positives were that I could hit the ball and the 50-50s were pretty good because my car is just a literal brick, but the downsides were that I was a literal brick and just felt kind of slow and clunky. Not too much more to say about the Merc, it's just, it's a big car. Finally, how would I rank the hitboxes? Well, I already said in the beginning that I would leave the Octane out as I have too much of a bias. So to start it off, in fifth place, I would put the plank hitbox. I feel like the plank is just too much of the wrong things. It's too low to the ground, it feels heavy, and it feels like getting good powerful hits was just too difficult for me. In fourth place, I would put the Merc hitbox. It's just a big car. You can't really miss the ball that much, and I'm sure with enough time you'll get solid aerials and flicks, but for me, I would leave it for the beginner players. In third place, I would put the Dominus. It's the car you pick up once you want to start focusing on your aerial game and wanted to go for some clips. Obviously, it can be used in a competitive scene as well, but I think it is much better suited for going for these clips as the length of the car will help in the air, but the length does feel a bit too long on the ground for me. In second place, I would put the Breakout. Coming into this, I was sure the Breakout was going to be either the worst or near the worst, but I actually think it's a really underrated car that is good at pretty much everything. The only downside is with it being a little bit flat, it means that if you aren't used to it, then you can have the ball fly over the top of you quite a bit like I did. And finally, I'm sure you guessed when I said the first time, in first place we have the Hybrid. I genuinely think that I would have probably placed the Hybrid and the Octane both in first place if that was included. But the Hybrid is just an all around perfect car in my eyes. I want to use it more and more, and I think there should be more cars being made by Psyonix that fit this hitbox, rather than placing every new car into the Dominus hitbox. Now if you haven't tried it out yourself, you definitely should. So that wraps up the video, if you have any little challenges like this that you'd like to see me try, please let me know in the comments as I love doing these tests and the progression type of videos. If you enjoyed then feel free to drop a like as it does really help the channel out a lot, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any future content. Anyway, that's all from me, I'll see you next time.